I've also had the chance to talk with many teachers as a counselor. You get, to, you get to speak with some of the teachers, and some of the teachers had some wonderful ideas. And I remember this particular conversation I had with this uh, white female teacher, all the kids love her, you know, and she had some wonderful ideas. And I said, uh, well, why don't you share those with the principal or some of the faculty? She said, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to lose my job. Hmm. We're putting this first, all right. And then I started to hear people talk about some of the students' families. Right? You know, you hear things like, oh, that, that parent doesn't care. They don't care about their school. And to me, that's a myth. Okay? Because the one thing we got to understand is that many of our parents are a, a, a lot younger, a lot less educated. And some of them are just fighting to survive. And so even in elementary school, when you send a kid home with some homework and you want that parent to help the student, they can't do it. And so we just got to think. We don't think about things like this sometimes. And then you got some families hmm, that like to guilt the children and say, we need you to stay home, don't go to college. I need you to help me stay here and take care of your brothers and sisters. You get that a lot. But the parent or the family is failing to realize that if that student goes to higher education college, he's going to better that family in the long run. And then I have to touch on this. My Hispanic, my, my Latino, Latina, Chicano, Chicano, however you want to say it, my brothers and sisters. People don't understand what they go through. Because many of my students, their families were Spanish speakers. And so sometimes the student who's in elementary school or middle school would be the voice of that family. So they may deal with some of the bill collectors or rent or some of the letters that came home from school. And then we're in school telling them, yeah, you can go to college, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. And sometimes we don't even realize that they're undocumented, they don't have social security. Therefore, that means when it's time to graduate, and although they may have a 3.5, uh, 4.0, or something like that. And in this case, if you will, I hear people talking about they got 4.7. But when it comes time to go to college, they can't get financial aid. They can't get certain grants, can't get certain scholarships. So what we gotta understand is, there's something called the Dream Act, Dream Act that we need to learn about. And understand that just because you see somebody and you think they have the same opportunity as you, that's not always the case. And then as some of the students move on to higher education, to college, it's interesting because many of the first generation, low income, underserved, however you want to name it, you know, the bottom line is many of our students that come to college, they're coming from places where they know nothing about college, but they come here and the financial literacy piece is not there. So it's interesting that when you get here, you get hit with, here goes a, here goes a pencil if you get one of my credit cards, right? You, you, are all, you have all these opportunities to get credit cards. But in K through 12 and in college and universities, it's funny how we don't have any classes that specifically focus on financial literacy. Because I was one of them. I got, I got to school and said, I'm rich. You know, hold credit cards for a while. And got in debt. And so one of the things that we got to think about is that financial literacy piece. Why is it that we're not preparing these students before they get to college to get hit with all this free money, which really isn't free? <laughs> and then, as they're in higher education, some of these students, and they start to get more involved and join organizations and join sororities and join fraternities, right? Which is definitely fine. I love it. You love it, I like it. I like it, you love it, right? Coach, don't. But they get involved with these organizations. And I don't know if people understand community service nowadays. All community service is good, okay? But there's a difference between going somewhere and establishing a long-term relationship, a relationship that's sustainable, and really reaching out to the community and kids who really need to see people that look like them in college. There's a difference between doing that 
and going somewhere to shovel some dirt or pick up some trash, which is all needed. But I think we got to remember. We gotta go to the community and make sure our folks, they see us in college and understand they can make it too. Because if they don't see us, they may hear, but then they might not believe until they actually see us. So we need to get out of the community and understand community service is a little bit more than a one day event. And you feel all good about, good, all good about yourself. Feel good, but you'll feel even better when you establish relationships in the community when they see you all the time. And so like I said a little bit earlier, I like to just write stuff down. So a couple years ago, I was sitting down. I was sitting down and I just started to write. Because uh, in some of my graduate courses and when I was working in the school, the same stuff was happening. There would be students of color in these classrooms just sitting there, just like a zombie, just standing. But then when we get outside of the class, they would talk to me and have so, you know, have so much to say, it was interesting. So I just started to write one day. So I want you to listen. Why are you here? Like so many black, brown, red, and any other color we've been called. The students who sit in the class full of people that don't look like them and say nothing at all, except, what's my grade? We sit in these classrooms like somebody pushed a mute button on us. And we have this burning feeling inside that screams nervous, scared, Unwanted. Why am I here? But at the same time, it screams, what the f? That ain't true. That's what they think about us. But nobody hears you but you. Why are you here? Sitting in math class with the ability to add, with the ability to add up how many times your teacher implied you were not capable. Oh, and don't forget you can multiply. So let's multiply that by the amount of times you've been late for class, skipped the test, forgot about homework, got into a fight, cussed out the teacher, didn't come to school, or whatever else I missed. So take the reciprocal of this equation, flip it, and then ask yourself, am I a fraction of the problem? So remember, be aware of what you do and speak. Because every time your voice is heard, it's powerful. It's like the square root, you can never be negative. Why are you here? So you don't talk. They don't hear you. You talk. They don't hear you. You keep talking. They have no choice but to hear you. Why are you here? And the last thing, if all you're willing to do is what you're doing, all you will ever be is who you are. Keep fighting for education. Equality. Thank you.